We got a few things today. I'm gonna try and keep it brief. Anyone who has been replaced as high command in the past should not qualify to run for sheriff. Why? Look, because if I have a heart attack, I gotta worry about the armless Tandy Miller doing my heart surgery. <laughs> That's why. So now you're mad that we haven't gatekept uh, employment. Oh wait, no, no what it, I was it's hearing not, it's that not about, it's not about gatekeeping. that we were? It, no, your whole, your whole point and argument is that the, the hospital is so essential and so necessary and must be here and that you are doing the best job and that everything is great. Um, But at the same yes, time, <laughs> you think that you deserve to be paid more than $250 yeah, when you're unable to do something about the pay i could have bowed okay. my fucking head and been real careful and just begged you for a pay raise and i'm sure i could have got it i do not give a fuck about that right now i care about defending the fact that we are doing our best and there are amazing people in that hospital who are trying every fucking day for this city uh and i will not have you shit on that uh i think they're doing great they're doing a great job and i think that they'll keep doing it for 250 an hour sure yeah absolutely okay i i just have to step in all right, because at the point in which the EMS isn't being taken care of, that affects my job as a police officer. So we already have an issue of like not having enough EMS on duty, and I don't know if the pay really fixes that, right? There needs to be something else that's done. But we had a scene yesterday. We had like eight, nine people down. So something needs to be done. I, I, we had one EMS there. I got the Karen Lang Buddha screaming in my ear, I, I, I need to go, I need to go. Somebody help me up. You know, it's like, holy shit, okay? We, and we're trying to do scene control we got uh we got a bunch of people just kind of showing up 78s call essentially and it's i mean it's a disaster because we only have one ems i roll up my damn sleeves i'm trained so i start helping people out right that shouldn't have to happen we, we should have people there and train we just have to find a way to support people and and, and bickering and bitching and moaning and all this kind of shit it, it ain't going to help fix that because because now my job's being affected even though i'm not a part of this shit and it pisses me the hell off okay i'm sorry no, I don't mean to raise my voice, but we gotta we gotta find a way to fix this shit. And we're at each other's throws all the time. It ain't gonna work. Hey, it's just not a great motivator for activity or competent command, unfortunately. No, I, I don't disagree. I mean, is there is there anything we can do to make the EMS have more fun? I, Last time I did volunteer EMS, I just went around rubbing dirt and everything. That was pretty fun. Man, that sounds great. It's pretty fun. Even I mean, if that's the person the shit just I, been shot in the head, I just rubbed dirt in the wound and said, "Suck it up, pussy," and I then mean, got them to their feet. Mm -hmm. That would probably work better than half the shit that we give people. I don't know what the hell is in them my facts. Uh, Crane already presented stuff. Corn, would you got anything? Boy, do I. <clears throat> Okay, we got a few things today. I'm gonna try and keep it brief since everybody comes to me bitching and moaning about everything. Okay. One thing that keeps coming up from command, PD command, is about the times and fines and ETA on the rebalancing of the times and fines. A lot of the charges already, are in place. So that, that I already talked to Slacks about that today. Um, to my understanding, there is some data being looked into by the technicians on why the MTD is. Um, oh, okay, is okay. So pending the adjustments from the IT guy. Uh, there's another question that comes from command: helicopters. I am going to be talking with the state on how much the manufacturer is going to charge them for right. the import of the helicopter, and then we will relay that. Okay. For now, it is a look but don't touch. This is something to be excited about for the future, but do not act as if it is actually something you have access to yet, and do not make plans around it. I want to bring up a specific legislation because just some shit has kind of gotten out of hand. And this is something that I've talked about with a lot of folks. The PD is weak, honestly filled with a whole bunch of pussies that are afraid to do their job sometimes. So I said, what better than to give the PD, I guess a little bit of impairment through legislation with the Police Vehicle Protection Act. We basically have people stealing our cars and shit and major, majorly hindering our ability to do our jobs. It's getting bad. And years ago, you know what we did? They're stealing our guns and shit. They're stealing our equipment. We'd shoot their ass, okay? Now, I understand that we can't always do that. However, having it legislated, some degree of qualified immunity, if you want to call it that, that, hey, if you need to take the force, use the force necessary in the given situation based on where you're standing, where the vehicle is, etc., then you can do that and you're protected in doing that. Because it's getting bad. Like, I went off duty so last wait, night. You're, asking, and I you're asking for the ability to shoot people to steer cars. Not always. Just use the necessary force. When? If you're at a distance, if you're real far away, and that is the only way that you could stop them, sure. If you're, you already have that in your SOPs. I was told never, that we're never supposed to do that. Okay, then you're never supposed to do it. We don't override SOPs here. Okay. okay. So, for example, if someone were to shoot at the cops and then steal a cop car and run away, then yes, you would shoot them. But if the right. person just steals the cop car and drives away, then you should not be shooting them. So, next thing is a castle doctrine. If somebody comes into your home or something, uninvited, unannounced, somebody breaks in, if uh, people can shoot them. 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see a problem with defending your property. Now, would that, I mean, shit, would that apply to your vehicles? No. no. That's the whole reason why you get to search vehicles without a warrant, yeah, is because they're not considered to the same level of habitability. But even on your own property. And in terms of self-defense, protecting your vehicle is a no-go. Listen, Corwood, right. if you're at home, uh, <laughs> and we have castle doctrine, and someone walks up, onto your property like oh. my front yard right and start stealing my car uh then yes i'm going to shoot the fuck out of them right okay that's what but I was that is mind. very different than saying like for example i'm a police officer and i have a police car and right. i no, no, that's, that's somewhere yeah. while i'm on duty no i was clarifying at home is what i was talking about okay yeah yeah can we take a vote on it the concept of castle doctrine i'm all fucking for that go but as a future homeowner i'm for it uh-huh and you won't hear my me stance. object to that uh-huh let them write it up. Uh, we can keep going. Okay. And then uh, the last thing, well, I guess the last thing ain't even me. It's it's about, uh, it's half me. Police continuity plan. Uh, what is, is there a job description for the commissioner? Uh, I actually just wrote one. Oh, okay. Because um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to present PCP2 or just, I guess it is technically PCP2 because there's some uh, clarifications that uh -huh. I made. Wow. Um, I wrote, the commissioner is the absolute head of the law enforcement chain of command. The commissioner does not answer the mayor's office in any capacity after being selected. Uh, commissioner is empowered to carry out the functions of law enforcement at the highest level as a political attache between the state and law enforcement communities. Uh, based on my research and discussing things with people, two things are, we're getting into PCP territory right now. Uh, so if I'm going to talk about it, uh, I may as well present it. Send it, I'm done. Okay. Um, the changes are as such. Um, in speaking with Barrick. Uh, in speaking with Cornwood, in speaking with many officers who have expressed a, an interest in there being another law enforcement department. One, I didn't think that there was anyone capable of being the commissioner. Essentially, my first compromise to this was, okay, the people want another department. What's the harm in that? Two different chains of commands. That's bad. If there are two different chains of commands, and you know, there's a situation where one department wants to chastise someone from another department, and then the person from the original department's like, nah, or the the, the person from the other department's like, nah, that's my deputy. Uh, you're just an officer. Uh, you're just a sergeant of the LSPD. Blah blah blah. And I got hung up on that for a long time, and I was like, okay, so what's the solution to that? And then I decided the best way to do it without a commissioner would be to make it so that there was at least a de facto head of chain of command, and that would have been the chief of police in this model uh okay, the sheriff go. of this other department would be this equal to the assistant said. chief and then i realize that's fucking stupid uh and, and why am i so afraid of allowing there to exist two different chains of command uh, what issues could it truly truly cause that would be ultimately detrimental to the functioning of the police department currently because the police department currently has problems that are so vast that it, it, I I struggle to even call them a police department because their their capture rate is so low that sometimes it dips down to two people per shift. I mean, if anyone's been out on the look, I, I understand and recognize that it is not the sole purpose of a police department to be this wildly effective crime crushing unit that is ultimately 100 percent superior. Yeah, we won't um, make anybody upset. I've spoken to Kyle Pred a couple of times, and I'm going to use Kyle Pred as an example. I know something like what Kyle Pred had will never happen again because it, it was dangerous. It bordered on paramilitary, it, it, like it, it was a fanatical was. cult. But they wanted to work because their morale was through the roof because they could count on each other and because they could they could be around mm. each other and know that they had each other's backs. And I think one of the first important building blocks of establishing that level of morale is to allow officers to express themselves in the way of choosing if they wish to represent one uniform or another. And after I spoke to a couple of officers, ultimately the model I wanted to settle on was two different chains of command. And I know that this has the potential to cause some tension if there's ever disagreement between two different commands about what they feel should happen to one particular officer if there's a disagreement. And the solution to that is to appoint a commissioner. And as I've said, there is no one suitable to be commissioner right now. So another addition that I added to this document is to allow the mayor to act as a person who will mediate and determine final decisions that could not otherwise be reached by uh, between two separate chain of commands Sorry. established if and when the secondary <laughs> he law made himself the commissioner. department is established courtesy of this plan. If this passes, I will move that a law enforcement department will open in the north. Uh, I will move that the sheriff elections begin, uh, and I will move that I will uh, moderately and carefully 
if I'm even called upon, resolve disputes between these two different chains of command. I think that the competition typically breeds improvement. Uh, and I think that if one department excels, it might also inspire the other department to excel. At this point, uh, I'm willing to try anything. This isn't how I always felt, but you know, between there being maybe five or six officers for shift two uh, and zero officers for shift three, uh, I think it's time to try anything. I mean, look, let's call let's call a spade a spade. People are finally seeing the same shit I saw three, four months ago. And at the end of the day, this is some this is going to be something to allow them to express themselves in a way that will hopefully uh, allow them to build the same kind of community minus the cult that was present. Uh, years ago. It is, it is hard to stress how horrible it is and, and how helpless everybody feels. I, I just, it is, it is so damn bad where we're losing officers every day. People ain't, they just, they, they, eventually they just stop showing up. Some of them have, have turned to a life of crime, apparently and allegedly, right? I don't know how much longer and how many more people can take it. It, it is so bad. There needs to be a whole mental evaluation on every single person that's in the PD because there's obviously so something that's wrong with you. Like some kind of self-harm. Like you you obviously hate yourself if you're a police officer right now. It is bad. <laughs> like we're losing, we lost a receptionist two days ago. A receptionist. That That's how bad the morale is. I got a question. Um, sure. How are you going to be privy to the issues that they disagree on? They'll both present their case. I'm a big believer in the thick blue line, and I do believe that we need to support each other more. I'm sick and tired of seeing police officers not supporting each other, because at the end of the day, I know how this city works, and we're all we got, okay? When you when you look to your left and you look to your right, that's it. You don't really got much else, and a whole lot of the rest of the world is against you. So the last thing we need to do, and there's a line, but don't, don't mistake my words. This ain't about like a asking for a lack of accountability. The last thing we need to do is to go against each other. Okay, you can still hold one another accountable. You can still teach one another and say, hey, this is how we can get better. This is how we can do right by not just each other, but by the city, by the people, by the, by the people that we're here to protect, right? And hell, since everybody else in this damn city cares so much, even the damn criminals, okay? Because at a certain point, you ain't going to have nobody to steal from the way things are going. All right? Yeah, I totally get that. What is your vote, sir? No, oh, well, I guess that's yes. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon, uh, Cantor. Actually, yes. Uh, you have my vote on this. Uh, Crane. Crane might vote no because he knows everybody else is going to say yes. Are you planning on replacing the chief and assistant chief? They're going to be under review. Oh, shit. It's a good thing Cornwood supported them. Uh, mm. <laughs> is the, okay, is the sheriff election uh, publicly voted? Yep, that's actually what the uh, original three captains wanted. Anyone who has been replaced as high command in the past should not qualify to run for sheriff. Ooh. Well, recently or? So, for example, if you go through and you decide you're going to shuffle around the current chief police or assistant chief police or you and the state decide you're going to, you know, do all these different things, then I don't think those people should be eligible for some kind of golden parachute to just go become a sheriff. What did everyone else say? Yes. Yes, so far. Yes. Cletus Cornwood. Uh, I abstain. Okay. Head of Bar Murphy Brown. I am progressive about policing. Yes. Uh, Chief of Staff Siobhan yeah. Thoroughbred. Duh. Uh, I'm also a yes. Uh, Sergeant Jeffrey Bones. We shouldn't fire him. Who? No, we're not talking about firing you. Oh. Not yet. That's the next discussion. That's a, yeah. I don't think we should fire him. We're not firing anyone, jackass. We're allowing, uh, we're voting on allowing Max to do the PCP again. Oh, promote him. So that's a yes. Two abstains, the rest yes. Now I would ask the Chief Justice to uh, open up uh, sheriff elections. Yeah, rather, I gotta uh, do sign-ups first, and then we'll vet sign the sign-ups, yeah, yeah. and then we'll do the ballot, and blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I pledge to do my best uh, to act kind of similar uh, to Let's... the judge when it comes to making impartial Let's decisions. Let's go! It's finally happening! Uh, the man. Woo! Let's go! Uh, chains of command. Dude, I'm literally um, going to Dallas. That, I have like a two week dead exactly. period. Oh hey, is that good? Uh, is the state announcements work? I saw Cornwood did one that we have access to, like as a test. Oh.